What's up guys? Welcome back for another round of useful tips for space engineers. We'll be going through the following topics on this video, starting from more basic to more advanced again. And with that, let's jump right in. The first thing we're looking at is timers and some things that just may not be very intuitive about them. So right now I've just got a, a reactor, a timer, and a piston here. So we go into the control panel and go to my timer block uh, setup actions so you can see we've got nine slots and there's actually 10 pages that you can also fill up with slots and you should be able to switch pages by pressing comma and period with those arrow keys um, but if i press on them like i'm doing right now it doesn't actually switch the page and i thought this was a bug uh, until i realized that you have to actually click one of these slots so now i've got number five clicked and now when i pass, press uh, say period it lets me go to the next page but it won't let me do that unless i click on one of these so it's kind of a, a finicky way to to go between the pages but if you know that you just have to click that clears it up and then while we're playing around in the pages uh, you can highlight this is that so normally on a page you can only do an action on a block one time. So let's say for the piston, I want to increase its velocity. And then if I try to do it again, it won't let me do it. It just switches the page or switches the spot. But I can actually, I could go to the next page and grab a piston and say to increase velocity and then it will stay. So I can have two calls to increase the velocity on the same timer and actually I could I could do that on every single page so you could do it 10 times uh, for the same action if you wanted to and then if you needed more than 10 um, we could do the trick with the groups and so I could just name this piston in a group called piston and then when I go back into my timer block then I'll just use the group piston tell it to increase velocity and that one also works so in theory, if you created nine groups, then you could fill up every single page of, or every single slot on every single page of the timer block, telling it to do the same thing for a total of 90 actions on just one timer. So that's pretty powerful to know if you, if you feel like you actually need that many of them, but it can really help save space in case previously you were just using one timer per action that can start to get crowded really fast which i've found out so now you know you can uh yeah save a lot of space that way the second thing is uh, talking about lcds and using them as kind of a light source or just a little bit of a accent light detail so i've just got the the LCD tops on the sides of the door here just to kind of highlight the sides uh, make them look a little better and then uh, moving on we're gonna be using these transparent LCDs a lot because uh, they have a really handy feature that they're visible from both sides so like a normal LCD block you can only see it from one side if I jump in here and make it a uh i'm using the white screen on all of these just to get this nice white effect but normally with a single lcd there's no white on the back and you've got all this dead space in front so if you wanted to put like a grate in front of the lcd maybe something like this then you would have a, a big gap between them which just doesn't look very nice but with the transparents, then uh, you can stick them right up against another block, and that can let you create some interesting shapes. So right here, we've got uh, some armored, armored windows in front of the transparent LCDs, which uh, does a good job of outlining it, uh, gives a nice effect. And then you could use them in front of these uh, sci-fi catwalks, and just as a bit of ceiling lighting with uh, an interesting look or you could 
sink them into the floor here. Uh, give it a little bit more depth like that as you go over. And then even using uh, just the normal LCDs, you could cover a whole wall with them and then just putting some kind of an interesting shape in front of them uh, really just creates a different look for yourself. Moving on a little bit further, uh, you can use them in corridors as kind of a cleaner, crisper light source. A little different than what the light, the normal like interior lights would provide. And then if you want it a little bit brighter, uh, this one's using text panels. And once again, just a, a different look. And you don't even have to just use the white screen. Um, just by changing the background color, you can make it any color. And you can also adjust how bright they are by adjusting those settings uh, in the control panel. Like on this one, I've got this dialed down pretty far back, actually. It could be uh, brighter blue than what it is. And then this is using the uh, grid texture on it, which I found looks pretty nice as a basically as just a, a detail light source. So LCDs as lights, um, I have a couple more examples just showing them in something that's a little more built up than this this room right here. So just to show what I was talking about really quick, you've got the lights on the ground here to designate the loading area for this ramp. Uh, they are around the door here to highlight the edges. And then also in the floor again, uh, it just it really gives a nice effect, gives it more depth as you're walking over. We've got the windows on the sides and then once again around the opening and then highlighting these parking spots in here so just a really nice way just to to draw your eye to whatever you want someone to be looking at so next up staying on the lcd theme is going to be how to display any picture on your computer or any like jpeg file onto an LCD screen inside of Space Engineers. And this uses a really handy uh, program made by Whiplash141. Uh, and it's his LCD uh, image converter tool. So I'll be providing a link to this in the description, but we'll just do a little run through on how it works. Uh, it's, it's very simple, easy to use, but can really open up a whole bunch of you know possibilities for ways to, to decorate your builds. So let's just say I've got, you know, something I made displayed here and I wanted to put some kind of uh, image with it. So actually we'll start out going to the program. So it looks like this and the instructions are all right here. Uh, you're just gonna browse for the picture you want. So I've got this sitting on my desktop and it loads it up. This is what the image will look like without any dithering. Um, and we'll get to that for a second. But you click on the type of LCD that you want to put it on. So this is a wide LCD panel. And then uh, the dithering mode is kind of like a smoothing effect to get rid of these, uh, these kind of weird lines on here. So there's these different types of dithering you can do. I usually just use this one um, just because it seems like it's always the best but you can see over here now that's kind of smoothed out all of the uh, lines even if it's a tiny bit more pixelated but once you're good with the image then you just click this guy right here uh, it spits out a whole bunch of gibberish but it copies it for you and so now I can jump back into my game and the only things you have to do uh, with it is you're gonna make this text and images uh, you're going to make the font size go down to the minimum and then change the font to monospace down here. So we just go to edit text and control V to put that in there. And now our image pops up on the screen there. Um, you can adjust the brightness by just changing the brightness of your uh, your color. You can also change like the, the background if you wanted a different color. but. If you just want the brightness to go down a little bit, which is usually the case, then you just bring these bars down 
so it's more of a gray instead of a white. But now I've got a, a sweet little picture to go along with that. And then uh, just really quick to show the difference between the dithering methods. So going back to here, if I just click no dithering and then copy, I'll set this up like the other one. And you can see that the picture is just not quite as nice. So that's why you would pick the dithering. But once again, I'll have a, a link to that that tool and uh, highly recommend it. You know, you can, you can go crazy with all the ideas uh, for decorating the sides of your builds or pictures or control panel screens, you name it. Next up is gonna be how to change uh, specific colors on something that you build without having to change the entire thing. Um, and this is using another program made by Whiplash called his uh, Ship Recolor Tool. And this one I have used uh, extensively. It, it saves you so much time if you want to make different variants of the same build. So just to demonstrate on this dragonfly, uh, let's say that I was happy with all of it, but I wanted to change the blue to something else, and I wanted to change the colors of the eyes only. And so I'll go out here and look up the recolor tool. So it pops up like this. Um, we'll browse and find our dragonfly blueprint. Open that up, and then we see here it's got a list of color values. And so you'll have to maybe search for the right colors that you want. This looks like it would be the eyes, and this is probably the skin. Um, if I want to double check, then I can come over here, hit Shift P, and then hit P to look at these three colors to uh, verify. So we've got 203, 83, 69. So if I go back and look, we've got 203, 83, 69, um, 203, 82, 69. So these are basically the same. I'm actually just going to change this one to 83 and replace. So then they all become those 83. But I know this is my skin, so I'm going to do change that to a different color so we'll say like a, a nice yellow green there click OK and then replace old color so now that one's that and we can also go over here and these were the eyes and let's say I wanted to change them to maybe like a dark red so we'll put those there click OK replace old color and then save changes so now when I go in my game um, I'll look up my dragonfly bl blueprint, copy that, and now you can see it's only changed those two colors and everything else is the same. Um, if I thought this was like too bright of a green, I could just go in, adjust the green color once again, maybe change the, uh, the value a little bit lower, make it a little more saturated or so, and then replace it again, save changes go back in my game and put it in so really rapid way um, to make a bunch of variants of the same thing without taking just painstaking amount of time to to go through and change only those blocks uh, super helpful and uh, yeah the guy makes you know you probably have seen his work he makes probably the best scripts that they're just game changing. Uh, the quality of life from his, the stuff that he makes is, it's just great. So highly recommend that you use those. So the last thing that we're gonna touch on is how to make multiple actions happen while only pressing uh, one button or only using one trigger. And so just demonstrating this, I'll press this button and you can see that a, a new timer turns on in the background. But I press it again, and now a third timer turns on, and I can press it, keep pressing it, and each time, um, it doesn't just go back and forth between two timers, it's a different one. And the way that this works is that button is triggering all three of those timers at once, but only one of them is on at any given time. And so like right now, number three is on, 
and what it's going to do is it's going to turn on the next timer in the sequence so timer one and then it will turn itself off so that when I trigger all of them one and two are off so only three gets triggered so you can trigger that and now number three has turned itself off it's turned on number one and now that's the one gets triggered the next time I press the button and so you can set up as many actions as you want uh, like this uh, you just need one timer for each of the actions you want to do and this has a couple cool um, I guess implications that you can set up uh, one that I thought of would be a counter um, and then another one is if you've got some kind of a mechanism that works well going one way but it needs to kind of work a little different going the other way so for this example we've got a, a turret on a piston and it goes through a sliding door so if I press the button the piston goes and the door opens at the same time because there's a lot of clearance but let's say I just told those both to reverse that door would close on top of the piston before it had time to go through but the way that I've got this set up is there's actually two timers that control the piston going down the first one tells the piston to move and then it waits a little bit and then it tells the second timer to go and that one closes a door so I'm pressing the same button as when it came up but now the piston moves before the door opens whereas again when it came up the door opens right away and the piston moves right away so there's all kinds of you know crazy mechanisms that you can do where it works well going one way but it doesn't it wouldn't work well if you did the same thing going back so this is a really clean way to only use one button in order to do this and it's set up the exact same way as these guys um, and this one over here is using six timers uh, so there's one for each of these lights and then there's one at the end to reset everything and instead of using a button I'm using a sensor which will detect this subgrid as it spins around on a rotor and so we can see as this starts to go uh, it just counts it all the way to the top and then they turn green and it resets and you can see how the timers are triggering themselves in order and so I mean I realized that you could just set up the timers to trigger themselves every second um, in order to make a pattern that looks like this but say um, instead of you know just using this light tower um, you made a game and you only wanted it to count every time say like a ball went inside a net so the score is going to remain like this um, until that ball goes in again and so it triggers again and now you've got say four points and just say you get one more and it goes to five and yay you win the game um, so that's the the kind of power of this one instead of just using a basic timer sequence which has to follow the time delay that's set on there and then actually another thing is you could add another side to this and will now it will trigger the timers twice as fast um, using the spinning and so I could actually add two more sides and get this going really fast and actually since timers can only trigger once per second um, this is a way without scripts to to make timers work a lot faster uh, than you would be able to do otherwise so a fun implication there um, just using that like multiple trigger mechanism and then also you know just kind of a score counter or however you would make it and then the whole system um, just a, a more advanced and cleaner way to set up your your timers with your mechanisms uh, and just help you improve overall that's all I've got for this video guys I hope you got some sweet ideas to try out on future stuff and I will catch you on the next one